All right, so 10 strong Pokemon you have to use in Scarlet and Violet. You know what? I know what you're thinking. And yeah, I suppose I have done videos like this before. There happen to be a lot, and I mean a lot of good Pokemon in this game. 90% of this Pokedex feels incredibly usable, so it's not hard to find any and all excuses to talk about it. However, I'm gonna do something a little more interesting with this one. I'm gonna ban myself from pseudo-legendaries and starter Pokemon with this list. Pseudos actually, while good in the late game, take too long to get to, and you're gonna use your starter anyways because it's your first Pokemon, and all three of them are pretty usable in your run. So, with that said, this list has no order. It's just me recommending you more Pokemon to go through the game with. Flamigo is a demon that is very easy to use and be caught very early on. You just gotta take your Miraidon slash Corridon and get ready to backwards long jump up a hill you're not supposed to access. And then, go get it. Right there, South Province Area 1. It's pretty crazy. It has excellent base stats throughout the entire game, a really offensive type combination, is fast, and for some fun speedrun trivia, I believe for a while it was touted as the best Pokemon for speedrunning Scarlet and Violet due to its ease of access and amazing stats. Its level up move pool is also good throughout the game. Assuming you follow the order of the gyms, Rotom can be caught pretty early right outside Port Miranata, where the Rotom catalog happens to be found. Easiest coverage of your life. I don't really need to waste too much time going over how good Rotom can be in your playthrough, given that it can be six different types, with five of those forms having really good stats and access to high power moves from the moment that you obtain them. You get access to it right before Kofu, and that's a pretty insane grab. Access to Leaf Storm this early on, and you resist water? Or if you want to not lose to his Crabominable, you just go wash over Mo, and you spam electric moves for the entire fight, which is honestly good enough. Rotom being amazing just isn't surprising. Oh yeah, it has access to Volt Switch by TM for when you beat Iono, just so you can pivot into a better matchup if you aren't confident. Speaking of Pokemon you can get right outside of Port Miranada, Cyclozar is a very good Pokemon to get in the early game. And even if it only plays support in the late game, and even if you don't have Regenerator, simply using Shedtail, the switch for free into a Pokemon that beats whatever an NPC has out, can just carry you through a match. And keep in mind, you catch Cyclozar at levels 24 to 28, last I checked when you head to Port Miranada which is really, really close to level 31, which is when you get Shedtail. Even before that, you get U-Turn. So, if you forget what your opponent is using, you can just send it in and use U-Turn on a bad matchup and go to your sweeper that way. After all, it gets U-Turn by level up at level 27. No matter when you cat Cycles are, due to its solid attack and bonkers speed, it will always find a use. Cyclozar is insanely broken in a playthrough. They made the regional bird of Paldea pretty strong, given that you get it from Watchroll at level 25. They gave it a base speed of 125, just to stick it to Meowskarata and Quaquavel in case you picked Fuecoco, and access to Electro Ball from the moment it evolves. Base 105 special attack isn't particularly bad. Admittedly, it's frail, but I argue that this doesn't matter. You get Agility at level 36 to buff up Electro Ball, and Terrestalizing into a pure electric type to take further advantage of this and lose some weaknesses is a pretty valid strategy. Not to mention, with access to Volt Switch, it can also pivot you into a better matchup. I'd actually argue that as long as you have a good buffer to Ice type attacks, you can play it alongside Cycles are to get good results, since they're both fast pivots. Heck, throw Rotom in there too while we're at it, since Rotom Wash is the buffer to ice types and can just pivot you into a better option. Sure, pivoting moves aren't as good in a playthrough as they are in competitive, but doing damage while switching in, in case you didn't remember what an important NPC uses and don't want to look it up, is always nice. I can't stress enough just how easy it is to get Magikarp. At the start of the game, before the first town, you can find it where you find Wiglet if you're lucky enough. And with experience share always on, it'll become a Gyarados before you know it. And Gyarados, as I always explain, is very good. Yeah, remember all that time I spent talking about just switching into a better option? Here is the better option. Intimidate lowers the attacking stat of an opponent, and early access to Waterfall at level 21 and Crunch at level 24 basically feels like cheating. 
yeah, you have to lug it around with you where it takes up some dead space in your party, but in return, you get an early game auto win that can still win you plenty of fights later in the game. And then once you get to level 36 and get that free Dragon Dance, all that talking of pivoting into a better Pokemon with Cyclozar, Kilowattrel, and Rotom Wash all starts to make sense. Cyclozar using Shed Tail and getting you into Gyarados for free so you can set up D-Dance and win the game? That sounds like a pretty simple and effective tactic if you ask me. Honestly, Nimble is pretty good, all things considered. Level 24 is a very early evolution, and it's got pretty solid stats and gets access to really good moves. It's worth using if you don't have a dark type already in mind for your party. Simply evolving and learning a base 80 power bug move, Lunge, which lowers the opponent's attack stat, can be enough to do pretty well in a decent bit of battles. Base 102 attack and base 92 speed is very solid in a playthrough, and access to Throat Chop, Sucker Punch, First Impression, Bounce, and Axe Kick as you go through the game gives it access to stab priority and good coverage. This is another excellent Terra abuser, as being able to terrestrialize and use First Impression is rather interesting if you're losing to a really fast Pokemon and need a way to revenge kill it. Off the top of my head, Sada's Roaring Moon is insanely fast, and Protosynthesis makes it very strong with the booster energy it has. This is your auto win button against it. It doesn't just win you that exclusive matchup, as access to Swords Dance helps you sweep certain battles. And even if you are underleveled for them, there's always Sucker Punch. I'll probably say it's pretty good for a playthrough. Honestly, given how good Fairy and Steel are when together, and how strong Gigaton Hammer is, Tinkaton is a pretty rational addition to the party. It isn't hard to use Sword Stance or Protect in between Gigaton Hammers. Go off. It's also pretty easy to get, as it should be found anywhere there's ruins, and the latest you have to grind for it is level 38. Hilariously, I remember actually catching it in the desert area on the way to give Kofu back his wallet, which is conveniently where you can pick up Cyclozar and Rotom. What is with all these powerful Pokemon being found during the hunt for Kofu? Admittedly, Tinkatink and Tinkatuff aren't great, but the moment you get play rough, evolve Tinkatuff and get Gigaton Hammer, it's guaranteed to be a menace throughout the rest of your playthrough. Just don't actually send it out against Corviknight. You have Rotom for that. Talonflame is actually good in playthroughs now. Fletchling can be found at Paldea's equivalent of Route 1, and you're the move tutor now. So when Talonflame becomes a team member, you get to go check its moves and make it remember Flare Blitz. Acrobatics is great stab, and due to the type change, your Terra actually can change your type without needing to go grab shards. One of the easier ways to get a defensive Terra, since your Terra will likely be normal. And that doesn't even mention the fact that it's incredibly fast, access to Flame Body gives you the 1-up on dangerous physical attackers, and then of course the access to Swords Dance in Roost will give you plenty of time to set up and sweep. I consider this to be a Gyarados level threat for your playthrough. And by Gyarados level threat, I mean that you can have Cyclozar shed tail into it, get off one Swords Dance, and then probably win the battle by just spamming Flare Blitz and Acrobatics. Unless you happen to run into a Rock type Pokemon to specifically take those hits. Honestly, I think it's come a long way since X and Y and Sun and Moon playthroughs where teaching it Flare Blitz felt arduous, and it was basically a wasted team slot if you wanted Fire Stab until way too late in the game. Now, out the gate, you get to go and take as much recoil damage as you want. Staraptor is arguably just as good, if not better than Talonflame to use in a playthrough, because you can just break through a decent bit of obstacles with Terra Normal Stab from a Staraptor. And Staravia isn't exactly bad in the early game. Go have fun using your big offensive button. Level 34 is still pretty early for a good fully evolved Pokemon, and access to close combat to break the rocks that would stifle, let's say Talonflame, is absolutely nice. The issue is that it doesn't get Brave Bird until level 49, which is pretty late, but Aerial Ace should still make up for it. And as mentioned earlier, Terra Normal Takedown should be pretty nuclear versus a lot of the game. Sure, it's not as fast as Talonflame, nor does it get Swords Dance, but in return, Staraptor is still decently fast, and is a lot more immediately threatening. It doesn't see the need to waste a turn on Swords Dance when it could just dive right in and bludgeon the opposition until they can't tell left from right. 
Also, for TMs, acrobatics is a pretty nice move if you're okay with not holding an item. Which, to be honest, I don't think they're too needed in playthroughs anyways. And if you don't like your Staraptor matchup, just like a lot of Pokemon on this list, you can use U-Turn. The reason I didn't bring it up for some of the other Pokemon like Talonflame and Low Kicks is mostly so you didn't hear me repeat myself. I promise though, this is the last U-Turner on this list. While I don't believe Cloyster is as good as the rest due to the fact that it isn't as easy to obtain as the rest of the Pokemon on this list, I found Cloyster to be a horrifying late game demon. The moment it evolves from Shelter, if you just didn't catch it in the wild in North Province Area 3, near where Ortega from Team Star is, it becomes probably one of the best Pokemon in the game. The moves you can make it remember immediately are insane. Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, and Shell Smash are all right there for you to use right out the gate. Due to its high physical defense stat and its middling speed, it becomes incredibly easy to go last, take a hit, activate Shell Smash, and then now you're faster than any and everything, and your offenses are also doubled. You're doing a lot of damage too, if not just one-shotting everything in sight. And to make the problem even worse, due to access to Terra, you can Terra water it in order to give it a better defensive typing anyways. And you get even more power on the Hydro Pumps you were already abusing and will be abusing throughout the entire game. Sure, you can miss Hydro Pump and it will sting, but given that you have five other team members, if your Cloyster happens to faint after missing Hydro Pump, it's really only a minor setback. Cloyster is absolutely a recommended Pokemon for Scarlet and Violet. Before I end this list, I would like to give a quick shout out to Great Tusk and Iron Treads, depending on which version of the game you decided to play. They're both phenomenal in your playthroughs, as you can catch them after you beat them in the desert where you fight them as Titans. I'm gonna say it again, what is with Pokemon that you can catch between Port Miranada and Cascarafa? They would be on this list if they were earlier in the game. But if they were earlier in the game, they would be way too absurd. So that's 10 strong Pokemon you absolutely have to use in Scarlet and Violet, some of which I am sure you were probably going to use anyways, or have already used, and others that maybe you weren't thinking so much about. I hope that I managed to influence some team choices, and if not, well that's fine too. With that said, what Pokemon do you think are broken in a Scarlet and Violet playthrough? I know I've definitely talked about Annihilate before, and my opinion of it remains unchanged, as that thing might have to be one of the most terrifying Pokemon I've ever seen. And of course, don't get me started on what it did to competitive singles. Terra Water Annihilate with Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Rage Fist, and either Taunt or Rest still haunts my dreams when I try to sleep at night. But what would you like me to talk about next? Let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my content. With Scarlet and Violet DLC on the way, we have a lot to be excited for. Not just that though, but I've got a bunch of other cool series planned throughout the year that I'm sure you guys will love. If you want to support my other forms of content, over on Mystic Reads, I read fanfics. One of them right now is Road to be a Pokemon Master Kanto Edition, where Ash and Serena start from the very beginning and journey through Kanto together. On Mystic Umbreon Shorts, I do other exclusive Pokemon content such as Pokemon Fan and on Saturdays, I upload my top five favorite Pokemon of a type. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent day.